What's happening? This is Avadon, and welcome to another episode of Beats for Breakfast. Today, I am joined by a very special guest. Today, we are joined by Miss Click. Miss Click, how are you doing hey, today? I'm doing well. How are you? I am well. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. Um, of course. I definitely am wanting to have you on the show because I know that you are a gamer. I know you're also a musician. You have a mm -hmm. really good video uh, where you was playing the ocarina. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I was like, okay, <laughs> okay. So, and I learned more that you definitely do more of music. So I just say, you know what, this will be a good opportunity to, you know, discuss some music with you, just even some content creation stuff and just yeah, see definitely. what you think. And we, we're joined by the famous cat that we see oh, in every street. Yeah, he's here. He's like, you're not streaming, are you? We're no. not streaming, but we're chilling. We're chilling. We're chilling. We're chilling. We're, we're chilling. But um, <laughs> for those of you, who, for those people who do not know you, who is Miss Click? What is Miss Click about? Uh, so I am mainly a Twitch streamer. I stream basically uh, every day and then night at this point, live on Twitch. Uh, I consider myself a variety streamer. We don't just really stick to one game. We will for a certain season, but we move around between single player, multiplayer, shooters, you know, like third person action adventure. Mm -hmm. um, and really just between all the different genres and brands, with the exception of Xbox, because I have a PC. So most things are on PC, to be honest. I, I get you. I, I, yeah. I only got an Xbox because a lot of my friends were saying, hey, can you play with us? We, we can't play these the certain right. games on Xbox. A common so. concept, yes. So yeah. Apex Legends and Fantasy Star Online too. That's the only reason mm -hmm. why I got a Xbox now. Yeah. Do you play anything else on it or no? <laughs> Let me think. <laughs> I, well, you know what? To be fair, I started Monster Hunter. Okay. I created an NBA 2K account. If that counts, I, I created my account. If that, if that counts. That counts. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, but other than Apex and Fantasy Star, I don't. Yeah. I got you. Yeah, got it, you. it's mostly Switch, PC, or uh, PS4. So well, we'll, we'll see with this new gen. Maybe that changes up and hopefully and some, like, more exclusives other than a couple. But yeah. hopefully, but just to start off with some lighthearted questions, what sure. are some of your top three favorite Zelda songs? Ooh, Zelda songs. Okay, um, so the the video that you saw of me playing was Fi's theme from Skyward Sword. Very I, love that game, actually. Yes, I I adore Skyward Sword for more for a lot of reasons, but Fi's theme is just like one of the prettiest themes, and it has like several different versions for people who recall through the game, um, and each time has such a different feeling. You know, it's mysterious or mm -hmm. it's happy or it's sad, you know. And so uh, I I absolutely love of um, Fi's theme. I think other than that. Ooh, it's tough because there are just so many really good themes, but if I had to pick like two others, it probably would be, um, I would have to say, I guess, oh, this is tough. I love Milk Bar. Milk yeah. Bar is just like, you hear it and it just yes. brings you back immediately. You know what I mean? Yes. Like if they actually started playing that in a legit bar, I'd be like, this is my jam. Uh, no joke. Um, no, I, Milk Bar is one of my favorites from Majora's Mask, actually. Yeah. So I'll give you yeah. that. Um, and that's really tough. If I had to bring another one up the top, off the top of my head, it would also be another, um, another Zelda song, but it would be probably Oath to Order. I, uh, I love Oath to Order. Nice. I love it, yeah. And there's been some amazing like remixes, but also, uh, was it Theophany? Theophany? He's a, um, he's a, he reorchestrates the pieces and brings them back to life, but he does more like ambient effects with them. Nice. Really awesome YouTube channel, but he'll have like a, like a seven, eight minute track that's inspired by these just Zelda themes. And it's the whole, he adds the sound effects, the like the characterizations, it's really cool. So um, when he brought up. out, yeah, when he brought out Oath to Order, um, again, I was just like, man, there's just something about with how short this, this song is, you know, that's just so well written and it's just so commanding. Like it, it commands your attention when it plays. And it's it, not just because there's these naked pink men like holding up the moon singing it, but, you know, it's like genuinely a good song. It is. It's like I actually remixed that one myself. And that was like the only song I think Did you? I'd have actually. Oh yeah, it's like I hear Like I remixed that one myself and it's easily one of still my favorites because it mm -hmm. 
it, like you said, it has such a powerful draw to it. Yeah. it. It really captivates your attention. The and Russians are just, ooh, like the rise and the fall. It's like, da -na, and you're like, oh, stop. And <laughs> it's like, I could only imagine a live orchestra playing that. It's, mm -hmm. it's definitely, it's definitely yeah. serene and it's powerful at the same time. You named two tracks from Majora's Mask, which that's people who laugh at me for saying that that's my favorite Zelda game of all time. Okay, no, I understand. So I I yeah. love Majora's Mask music, which yeah. is music for me drags me into the game instantly. Mm -hmm. So, yep. uh, but um, those are those were good. Those are a good three. If I had <laughs> to pick, um, yeah, yeah. I would say the first one would be the windmill music from Ocarina of Time. Oh yes. So yeah. Song of Storms. Mm -hmm. Um. The other one would be the overworld theme that you hear uh, in Zelda 1. They remixed it and put it in um, Ocarina, okay. not, Majora's Mask. Yeah. And I would say Ganon's theme from, um, from Ocarina's Time. Yes. Ganon's oh. theme, like the, how yeah. it just builds up. It's still yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah, wow. Oh, that one gets me though. That one gets me stressed. Like that one's <laughs> like, if, if you're late to work, I'm throwing that on and driving real fast. Yes. <laughs> That's so good. Yes. Yeah. so, but while we're just a little bit on the Zelda topic, um, <laughs> go, as we know, we don't know if Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out this year, next year, whenever it's coming out. Right. What are some of the things that you would like to see in Breath of the Wild 2? that weren't in Breath of the Wild 1, or even mm -hmm. better, what would you like to see improved upon from Breath of the Wild mm -hmm. and Breath of the Wild 2? I think the common answer would be weapon durability and whether that's gonna be handled the same way. You know, are they gonna stay mm -hmm. consistent or maybe improve upon it? Or, you know, are we still gonna have the Master Sword? Cause that's not necessarily something we see at the end of Breath of the Wild. Normally we like see the Master Sword put back in some shape or form and we didn't see that. Mm. Uh, so, you know, like, um, also, I can't recall. Does he have the Master Sword in the trailer that we saw? I, would, I, know, he, I, I know they have a torch, but yeah, I have to go back and look. I, so maybe he does. Maybe I was thinking confirmed. about it, actually, because when you said that, I was thinking, did he have the Master Sword in that trailer? And I Yeah, can't. I'm trying to think. He, I think he might have, but we were just overlooking because I was mainly paying attention to the whole fact that Zelda's hair was cut, you know, because that's like a big deal. Like it when is. your hair is that long, you don't just like cut it and be like, ha ha, ha. You know, it's usually like either some issues gone down or you were just sick of it. You know, it's like in the way all the time. So it was a big deal. Um, I think for the game itself is I definitely want more of a driven story. Uh, the reason why Skyward Sword is still my favorite Zelda um, and it is the sense of the lore and the storytelling that it has. It really develops upon the relationships of the characters. There's some of the best story arc, uh, character arcs, I should say, for like, you know, Groos, um, and and Zelda, you know, even just the characters get so much time to change. Um, and you do see that a little bit in Breath of the Wild, but because it's such a free um, paced game, they had to do it in bits and pieces so you could do it however, you know, you wanted. And so I, I do miss kind of more, I guess, more of the linear experience i think you could still get the exploration in um if we even are going to get to explore but I, I just definitely more piece together stories where it's like i i love those moments in zelda um and then i think if there was one other thing it would probably it would probably i just i really 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 want to see rehydrated ganondorf or like a flashback of something you know, whether that's a character that tells them what happens if you see the flashback or Zelda or Link actually like, I don't know, get touched by that green thing and they have a flashback. Uh, just I, I would love to, to see what happened, you know, and mm -hmm. like personally, my theory is Ganondorf might have kind of been good. And maybe like he's the skeleton in the closet for the Hyrule family, you know, that maybe? that's a that's a, a weird so. taste because. Yeah. That's a, it's a weird it's a weird twist in how they how they showed that trailer because yeah I saw I think it was either you who shared it but there was a um a cartoon like a small short that someone did showing that Link Zelda and Gan and Ganondorf were all actually friends growing up they were yeah and I yeah. said huh well, what if, cool concept what if that was actually the case so yeah yeah I'm looking at go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because it, it would be cool, you know, if they touched on aspects. I mean, granted, this is Nintendo, so I'm not expecting this. It's just cool to think about, you know, like we have seen the hieroglyphics, you know, of of the first princess to seal Ganon away the first time. But the hero didn't necessarily look like Link in those hieroglyphics. You're like, he has long red hair, like Ganondorf. 
It doesn't look like Link at all. Is that just the portrayal? You know, like we don't know. Maybe a Gerudo artist helped make it and they just wanted to make the hero look like a Gerudo. But was he actually at one point, you know, possibly? And that yeah. and that's the part with Zelda Breath of the Wild that Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. I'm wondering how they're going to do this, because yeah. if I'm not mistaken, Skyward Sword is the beginning. It's like the genesis yeah. of all Zelda games. And uh, Breath of the Wild is like the end timeline. So yeah, it's right at the end. So we don't know. They might honestly, I honestly thought that they were going to conclude the series of Breath of the Wild when she's like, at one point she had said something like he's given up all form of reincarnation. I, I know they meant that basically he can't turn back into a human in this lifetime, but I, I went, during that moment when I was playing, I was like, oh shoot, are they ending the hatred reincarnation cycle or whatever? Uh, but now we realize like we only knew half the story in Breath of the Wild 1. So Breath it's... of the Wild 2, I feel like we're gonna see a lot of things that we kind of got glances at or we walked through certain areas. And I think that they might hopefully play, you know, more into this next storyline, so. That'd be cool. That'd be definitely cool to see. Um, I'm really interested in seeing how how they're gonna do more sort of combat because mm. I get Majora's Mask vibes from Breath of the Wild too, in the sense that it's a continuation. So it's like, yeah. is this Ganondorf or is this a new antagonist altogether? Maybe, yeah, that'd be interesting. Maybe his name's, you know, well, yeah, it's tough because like we do get a little bit of glimpses from uh, from Urbosa where mm -hmm. she was like, you know, he existed. There hasn't been a male born since. Um, and, you know, he took the shape of a Gerudo once mm -hmm. and we don't we are more than his legacy. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I like gave more of a, a humanized spin on Gerudo that they're not just blindly fo following him. They're like, mm -hmm. no, we understand he was a horrible person, you know? Um, so I, I, yeah, I think it'd be really interesting to see, like, maybe it's a plot twist and he's not even Gerudo or his name's again, not even Ganon and it's something else. Like, I don't That'll know. Be, that, see, now, now you got me excited about for, for a game that's not even coming out. I'm excited I for know, Final I Fantasy VII Remake. Now I'm thinking about yes. Breath of the Wild too. So yes. Yes. this is so many good games. It'll, it'll be, wouldn't it be crazy if Nintendo, like in June decides to say this is dropping in December? I honestly, I think, um, Especially even with all like the COVID stuff right now, I definitely mm. think that it would be even more of a mind blowing aspect because you know like it, it's possible. Honestly, I think at this point it would even just be safer for them all around to do an anniversary launch mm. in March um, for the anniversary of the Switch and Breath of the Wild. Like, wouldn't that be kind of cool to have it launch on the birthday? Um, that would. But if it was holiday, even better because that drives so many sales. Mm -hmm. You know, versus a March release, you can get away with that because it's a brand new console. You know, back when it came out. So, we'll it's, see. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting nonetheless. But before we get further into the interview, we are sure. gonna take a quick commercial break. And while you guys are still here, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe. Well, follow and subscribe. I'm gonna have both <laughs> Twitch and YouTube yeah. to misclick. And here is a clip from one of our reactions. Stay tuned. direct i actually have one more thing to show you no you don't thank there's literally you nothing else you can show watching. us at this point until next time thank you arigato there's literally there's literally nothing else you can show us that like we Awakening! Are you serious? 
Are you serious, my guy? The best Zelda. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Link's Awakening. They're bringing Link's Awakening. They're bringing Link's. Oh my god. Yo. 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 I called it for the water. I knew it before he even showed him. Link's Awakening is here. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Let's go. I will definitely cop this. I will definitely cop this. Do you guys know how, how great this game is? Do you guys know what this means? Do you guys know we're getting Oracle Seasons and Ages now? What? Welcome back. Hope you guys found those reactions entertaining. Um, last minute, I, I was, before, during the break, I was, we was talking about our reactions to Zelda, and I just said yeah. it was suggested for me to put my reaction to Link's Awakening on there, so hope you guys find that entertaining as well. <laughs> but um, we're going to go ahead and ask Ms. Click a few questions just about YouTube, Twitch, and just business all around, because um, Ms. Click, you have a great twitch following your um partner on twitch correct yes yes so you have a successful support base over there and mm -hmm. i was just curious is like what were some of the merits what are some of the merits that come with that and what are some of the challenges that comes with maintaining that yeah definitely i think obviously with affiliate uh, being an affiliate or a partner you definitely have to give up your um, your multi-stream access, you know, streaming to the same site or streaming at the same time to different sites, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. When you choose to, um, and I think YouTube will roll this out eventually once I feel like they have their numbers up, um, is basically you become affiliated and partnered. You sign your, like, your name on a piece of paper saying, hey, I'm going to stream just to you and give you undivided attention. Um, and then, you know, if I decide to stream somewhere else, it's got to be, you know, at a completely separate time. So that was tough at first because I was streaming to Twitch and to YouTube and you know, like all these things th at different times. And it was kind of kind of frustrating because a lot of people, um, and I'm sure there's some of you at home right now who have never really like checked out Twitch, who have never tried it. And it's very niche and weird. We have a lot of words that are own language, you know, and people are like, what the heck is POG or what is Kappa, you know? And, and so people tend to like, a lot of people didn't follow over. So around the time that we had been streaming to both, we had really good turnouts between the two sites. Um, and then when I switched just to Twitch, uh, it was pretty much like most of the people didn't switch over from YouTube to Twitch, some numbers went down. So it was a very, um, I guess, humbling process because you really you know, learn who um, has truly been there to support you for you and not just the site that you stream to. So shout out to all my homies who came over. You guys are freaking great and I, I love them to, to bits. Um, I think other than that with, with partnership, it definitely makes it a little bit easier to um, support yourself because you do get things like ads and you can prompt those yourself. So if I go to the bathroom, you know, if you're not subbed, sorry, you're gonna get an ad. I mean, you're just gonna see a BRB screen anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but you know, that all counts as like adding on to your, your end of the month paycheck, essentially. Um, and then other than that, you get the really cool check mark, you know, um, mm. and at the conventions, they have a whole lounge for you with free food and free drinks and, and uh, special perks and gifts that they give you. So they really do, um, you know, make you feel like, hey, you've given us your undivided attention whenever you decided to hit that go live button. So we're going to do the same for you when, you know, you decide to come to our events. So it's been really nice and uh, a really supportive community. Um, so I couldn't be more thankful for everybody that I've had in my life. Thank you for sharing that because yeah. I've never really got a chance to hear from someone with who's mm -hmm. on Twitch mm -hmm. to get another perspective from it. It's like, yeah. I'm, I'm a it, it, it can be yeah it can be kind of weird definitely i you totally like there's a there's a big difference between the two um you know youtube tends to be a little bit easier to discover when you're live and not live twitch it's pretty much just when you're live you know and so people the engagement between streamers is a little bit uh, more than you'll see on youtube like they have the really cool like host functions so if i end stream and I don't really want to interact with someone, I can send all my viewers just to watch someone else and it's hosted on my page. So it's really good for helping other people grow. Or you can raid them where it sends a whole command 
whole prompt. You're all just spamming happy messages. And the other stripper's like, oh my God, you know? But it, it helps people grow because uh, it's a it's a it's a site mitigated, you know, through that live experience, um, and not so much the video on demand. I like that because it's like I've been a YouTube partner for about going on two years now, like mm -hmm. about a year and a half. Uh, September 2018 is when I okay. got my um, YouTube partnership at 1K, 4K uh, um, watch hours, and yeah. I could say there are some. There are some perks with YouTube, but I always was fascinated with Twitch to the point where it had me thinking, if I wanted to go on Twitch, I mm -hmm. wouldn't want to do the same exact thing that I'm doing on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, cause I believe, I believe in things differently when it comes to like marketing yourself. If you're gonna go on a yeah. different platform, mm -hmm. give some people some incentive to follow you only on that platform. So it's right. almost like they can't get the same thing somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that's, I've been test driving, doing just only music streams on Twitch. Nice. Okay. Yeah. That's a good so for that. I'm, I'm trying it out here and there, but uh -huh. I was, I will say it's Twitch is definitely a welcoming community. I will say that with different Aww. things. And I've seen, I've seen different things now when I have a few friends who stream, I go there and, and I'll support them. You're right. The host option is a mm -hmm. wonderful option. Being able to raid people and send mm -hmm. everyone who is watching you to go support yeah. the, someone that you support. It's, it's well, because I've seen where people would raid somebody and they become genuine fans of someone they've never met before. So it's great right. for exposure. Yeah. Oh, dude, I've become some big fans of people I never thought. I actually, the other day, there was um, some of my uh, Twitch, you know, like inspirations and, and role models, you know, found my channel randomly and they like, you know, followed and that's cool and everything, but then they sent a raid and it's like, oh my God, there's like actual thousands of people now from this person that I respect so greatly. Like now I'm going to be like compared by their viewers to like the standard, you know, and it, it definitely in a way it kind of raises the bar for you and it, it gets you thinking of new and creative ideas you can do. OK, the next time a raid comes in, what can I do to to keep their attention? You know, because you pretty much only have like 10, 15 seconds before mm -hmm. someone just clicks off, you know, so it definitely is really cool. It, it, it pushes that personal improvement and drive and self teaching because that's I mean, you know how it is. Like you're doing YouTube and Twitch, and you gotta go. You gotta YouTube how to do YouTube, or YouTube like how to do this in your streaming software. You know, right. it's, it's a lot of like asking questions and seeking answers. I definitely could see that because um, I had that experience happen to me once. This is why I was streaming video games on Twitch, mm -hmm. and I was playing a modded version of Final Fantasy VII, the OG version, and. I, and the mods I was using, they were cool. The person who created the mods, him and his followers rated the stream that time. <gasps> oh I my was God. like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold up a minute. <laughs> so they said, we're like really glad that you like the build that we- Oh, that's awesome. And it was, it was humbling because I was just doing the stream right before they came. I was saying how like, yo, the music, like they redid the music and everything. I said, this is like oh, wow. really okay. good. Yeah. So I could definitely um, see that now. I did, you did mention earlier, you are a variety streamer, which mm -hmm. is something that I love that aspect. I don't like the aspect of, I have to play this one game every time I yeah. come on. Yeah. And I, I see it when the times I drop in, you're playing either Splatoon, sometimes you're playing Overwatch, <laughs> sometimes you play Animal Crossing. So it's like, yeah. there's a lot of games. And I, and I wanted to ask, does that help your user base on Twitch or does that hurt it? Because on, I know on YouTube that hurts your user base. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. I think what ended up happening is um, you know, I kind of went through after I had left multi-streaming, you know, mm -hmm. on YouTube and I took that hit because you see the numbers at the end of the month and you just feel like, man, I did, I made a bad mistake. You know, I, I, I stunned my growth, but then, you know, like through a lot of advice and other people that I looked up to and that were willing to answer my questions, they were thinking of, do you want quantity or quality of viewership? And I was like, you know, I, I guess that applies to viewers as well. You think about that with friends or colleagues, you know, people that you trust and depend on. You know, with your with your viewers, do you want them to be there only for the game that you play? Or do you want them to be there for you? 
And so it was, it, it's a lot slower to grow as a variety streamer, I would say, uh, because some people just will be like, oh, she's not playing a game I want to see today. I'm not going to come. But slowly but surely, people that enjoy you for how you react or how you, you know, interpret games, you know, it kind of changes the perspective of I'm only going to be here when she's playing that game to where it's like, oh, I'm going to suggest a game that hopefully she'll play in the future that I really like that she hasn't played or maybe she'll react to that. So in a way, it, it, it creates a new mindset of I'm here to interact with each other, like the chat when they interact with each other and they're bantering with each other and like being so that's sarcastic. And, that's literally the best. Like, that's I don't think best. if anybody watching at home, like streamers love that. Like, it's one thing when everybody's trying to talk to you because you're like trying to keep up with the comments as the streamer. And it's like, you're at a party, but all a hundred people are talking to you. You know what I mean? But when they're able to interact with each other because you've like been able to kind of slowly create that atmosphere of, mm -hmm. of interaction, you know, it's, it's one of the most rewarding things. And there were definitely times where I was like, man, I just need to stick to one game for the rest of my career. And, you know, we did that for a while. I think there were a couple months we played literally nothing but Splatoon, literally nothing. And we did see growth from that, um, from the Splatoon community, just because it's such a special community. Uh, but eventually, you know, I told them this isn't going to be forever. I just need to like not because it also is kind of stressful as a variety streamer, you know, like when am I going to play today? You know, or you sometimes you do think if I want to play this game, but I feel like it gets lower viewers sometimes, even just minimally. So do I play what I feel like I should play or what I want to play? And it can kind of weigh down. So for anybody who's ever curious about, you know, streaming, you figure out, you know, are you willing to maybe grow quickly for one game? But if you ever feel like, man, I just need a break mentally, you know, like physically with your hands, you know, just all this different kind of stuff. Are you are you willing to possibly take the hit, you know, versus growing slowly where people are there for you? I like that because you know it makes a lot of sense because that was one of the reasons why um, I decided to go the more of the streaming route on my main channel with Avedon Smith and where mm -hmm. I kind of put a halt on creating content because yeah. I, I told myself one I wanted to create content where people could establish and associate with just myself yeah and two I wanted to be able to stream different games and different at different times to the point where it's like okay we're getting to know like you said know who i am and on and on yes. youtube youtube doesn't necessarily promote that so much mm -hmm. but i will say you're right in terms of the natural growth because i've seen where new people have come in and it's like they it didn't hit me until one episode I had to host a chill cast by myself one time, which it was just one of those nights where everybody was either not feeling well or yeah. and it's like We all we all find a night like that where it's like, oh, there's like no one around to The show be must go here. on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah. I literally found out that night where somebody said you know what? I'm subscribing. It's just like, but I like how your character is. And it's like, that oh. is rewarding. It's like, yeah. when you see that people are subscribing just for yeah. you. It makes you want to do more and give even more definitely value with that. So I definitely wanted to, while we're in this arena of talking about, you know, dealing with, you know, positive people, in cases there have been cases where we you know as streamers deal with negativity mm -hmm. and just wanted to have some fun just for the chat for future content creators who may be watching this yeah. what are some positive ways that you have dealt with negativity being a youtuber or being on twitch or mm -hmm. even when we're even on twitter and we're just mm -hmm. being ourselves on twitter what are some positive ways to deal with negativity yeah uh well first off i i YouTube's okay at it. Twitch is really good moderation tools. Like I love the fact that you can, yes, you can on YouTube as well, but mod people to, you know, help you. Like if you're in the middle of a game, right? You can't just stop what you're doing, get shot and die and like ban somebody, you know, for them saying something. So I love the fact that I've had such a strong relationship with my, my moderators and you know, like they are like my inner circle of people who are just there. You know, like if something's going on even personally, I'm like, yo, this is what's up. I'm going to tell everybody else, but I want you guys to actually know what's going on. 
Uh, and, and that's just been such a really good support system because like they get to see more behind the scenes so they understand if I come on stream one time and I've just been having a crap day like on Twitter or something like people send the mob after me I can tell them like hey you know I'm a little on edge so I'm gonna try to ease my way into it so if I seem a little on edge it's because I am but you know it's people being there for you to understand and I love that and that's that's been a really positive tool because you feel like you're not alone even mm -hmm. when the trolls hit um, other than that, you know, the best thing you really can do in reality is ignore it. But if you feel like it's a situation where, you know, like someone's trying to take a hit below the belt, you know, um, just play it off. You know, you can joke about it. Um, sometimes I like to pretend that they have a certain voice that's just really obnoxious. And people are like, isn't that mean? Aren't you making fun of them? And I'm like, sweetheart, they're a troll on the internet. Like that, honestly... Like, that's the attention they're going to get from me is, you know, like, I'm going to talk like this because I'm, you know, like, weed lover 42069 XXX, you know, and that's just what I do. And, you know, it's fine. But it, it sometimes, like, I'll genuinely get annoyed and I'll respond like that. But I'm not going to, like, insult them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And maybe insult their ego a little bit. But that's just, that's fun to do. Maybe not necessarily, I mean, I do it in a positive way, I guess, kind of. But after a while, you know, you just, you hear certain jokes uh, over and over again. It's like, oh, come on, find something original. You know, like, I don't know, insult my backdrop. And I'd be like, whoa, 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 don't insult the backdrop. You know what I mean? Like, anything but the backdrop. Like, insult my hair or something. Um, but, yeah, I, I, don't, mean, I don't know. It's, it's, I definitely owe a lot to my mods uh, because we can usually take care of it so fast. I will say on Twitch, the new mod view is definitely nice. I had it uh, um because I'm a mod on one or two channels on on Twitch, so I got a chance yeah. to use the mod view and yeah, it's cool, right? Very cool. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. YouTube, please take notes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I I like the mod view on on Twitch and definitely um for myself, I could say I have mods because I try to keep my chat um not only the street between the people who are talking, but also the chat family friendly, because mm -hmm. I'm very, I'm very mindful of the fact that I have, um, may, I may have a younger audience who may yeah, be Yeah, you have an influence, definitely. So, yeah, even people who have a crappy day, you know, like you're there, you know, when a lot of people might not be. So like, I totally get it and I respect that because that's such an important aspect to have. It is, and it's like my mods are quick to get rid of any type of, you know, suggestive language from from the chat. Yeah. And I just said, you guys are really helping me out. This, you guys yeah. are a big help to the point where it's like, I have trouble thinking. But if you guys are watching this now, you guys are hearing this uh, first. But I have trouble thinking about, yo, what can I do something special for my mods? It's like. You know, mm. you wish you could just do something special. Right. Take only him on vacation. Folks. Yeah. And it's like you realize it's like it's a little bit harder to do because everyone's spread out throughout the world. So yep. it's, 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 it's difficult, but I'm going to find a way to just, you know, show that I appreciate them yeah. you know, for all that they do. Yeah. So uh, we have this thing that I, I I saw another streamer do that uh, we did once. We're gonna do it again because every couple months I'll add more mods to my team. Mm -hmm. The more I feel like we need it. Uh, but I started doing um, and let us know if you guys would like to see this too from Avi because that'd be freaking dope. But we started doing like mod interviews. So I would take you know like a set 15 20 minutes with each mod and just ask them a series of questions on kind of like a podcast I guess. Yeah. Uh, but just so everybody else got to like know them and like what they do, what their interests are. What's the most annoying thing about chat? And dude, they'll go off. Oh, they'll go off. They'll be like, oh, let me tell you about chat. And it's just so cool because like they get to feel like they have a voice. And uh, nice. yeah, I love my mods to death. So I do, I do too. It's like all all of them. It's like I. And of course, the chill cast. I make the entire chill cast the the mods mm -hmm. themselves. So it's not like, and that's that's the that's the thing that makes me smile. It's like, it's not just my eyes, but all of us who are on camera. All of us have our eyes on the chat at the same time. It's true. So yeah. one of us, if one of us sees something, and one of us is either text each other on discord letting you know each other know it's like do you see that in the chat okay get rid of it get rid of it some other yep. person other mods they just know they don't even have to ask and it's you guys are awesome 
I'm just gonna let you guys know that Aww. right now. You Shout guys are to awesome. The you guys are awesome. So mm-hmm. we're gonna go ahead and go on our um, last commercial break. Then we get back, we're gonna talk more about Miss Click and music. Please stay Yay. tuned. Yo, it looks so good. This is like, it gives a whole new life to the original game. You know, it's like the same story, but not really the same game. Let's go. God, their updated character models look so good, dude. <gasps> no, don't step on the lilies. Oh. Shadowing. How long have y'all been waiting for this? How many years at this point? Like seven, seven years or so? God, it looks so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, the train, let's go. There he is. The music's great. Uh, how's it gonna handle this scene right here with like the tr the train pan side? That's what I'm most interested about. Like the controls where you kind of just like, it's a still frame and you're moving in it. Like that's how I want to see how they've adapted and changed it. Oh, there's Jesse. Let's go. So cool you actually like get to see them like see them you know what i mean oh man he looks so good is he just as sassy in this game okay welcome back hope you guys enjoyed that quick commercial break um Let's click it up with talking a little bit oh, during the break and i wanted to just i was about to ask her this question like hold up I'm like, hold up, wait a second. <laughs> we need we need to go ahead and save this for you guys. So, uh, Miss Click, one as mentioned, you are a musician. Uh, would you mind telling um, the audience uh, what instrument or what instruments you have played and how long? Yeah. Uh, so I have been playing in music in general, uh, like actually focused on it, not kind of like ah, it's a home hobby thing, like basically for 14 years at this point. Um, but I actually am a, I, call my, I still call myself out of force habit a percussionist. Um, that's more of the orchestral term, but I mean, I guess you could just call me a drummer if you really wanted to. Um, I started out, you know, in like the orchestral type band. So you had more of the traditional snare drum, bass drum, cymbals, timpani, stuff like that. Um, and I took all that all the way up through high school, through the conservatory that I went to. But then I also, at that point, dabbled into marching arts. So I became very rudimentary and like rigid and everything had to look perfect. And I definitely loved that about marching. And I, I honestly, it was one of the best experiences of my life. It just sucks you have to pay like so much money to continue doing it after you get out of school. So for those of you who might still be in school, you know, like, don't take it for granted because, like, that's, that stuff's, like, basically almost free, you know, versus, like, a couple grand a summer. Yes. Um, yeah, but now nowadays it's pretty much uh, I, I just play uh, drum set, mainly because, like, you can't, like, you can't walk down the street with a marching snare. It's going to sound like someone's firing a machine gun out in the street. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's um, drum set's definitely been one of those things that has kind of tied me over. You know, like get those endorphins going and, and get the, the negative energy out. That's kind of just how I've always dealt with stress. Um, and for a while, I was just, you know, playing with uh, some of my best friends. They had, you know, guitarists and vocalists and stuff. And I was playing through church services at the church I had grown up in. And uh, just some really amazing opportunities helping fill in. But it had been a couple years since I had really had um, a chance to play again. So I decided recently to invest in on a um, really nice Roland electric set. And I'm very excited because we're going to start drum streams like literally next week. 
Um, and I have a playlist I'm compiling right now of, of viewer requests. And it's it's been very, very exciting. Very nervous because I haven't, I've always played in a live setting. It's always been like in front of people, but you're on a stage, so lights are on you. So you don't see them, but you know they're out there. So you can just kind of do your thing. Versus like, I'm in my room with a camera and then chat's just going. And you know, it, I don't know. It's a little bit different of an atmosphere. So, no, we'll definitely. On stage performance, it's it's a different. I had a one of the f uh, first three episodes. We had an interview where we spoke about on stream pre on stream performance and mm. on stage performance. Mm. There there is a parallel in terms of making sure you maintain the audience's attention. Yes, but the on stage performance has more of a physical drawback because you're really on stage and it's like it's being on stage it's probably easier to lose your footing or lose your mm. rhythm on, when you're on stage mm -hmm. as opposed to being you know in at home you can be a little bit more relaxed and if whatever you, you do mess up it's almost like it could be naturally covered up or naturally put into yeah i almost i like i totally understand what you're saying because all my friends are like that and i'm almost kind of the opposite in the sense that I think because I'm such a hard critic on myself, mainly because that's how my my instructors, my mentors had taught you like be like really self-analytical. I took that like to the extreme. So if I'm by myself and I don't like the way something sounds, I'm like, oh God, no. Versus like when it was live, it was usually something that I had rehearsed and practiced so perfectly. The muscle memory was there. It was just enjoy the ride, you know, like look around and experience it like you know, when you're on the marching field and uh, we do like the, the national championships and there's just all these people in the stands, you know, and you're like one of the last to perform. So they're all like standing up and excited. Like that was like such a rush. And it's very hard, like being in my own mind, in my own room <laughs> when I mess up and I'm like, oh God, dang it, you know? And a lot of people don't know any better. A lot of people, you know, they're just here to watch you, you know, play music. They don't necessarily know the terminology or they're not really there to judge, you know? Some people are, but most people aren't. Um, and there's, I just need, I need to remember that there actually aren't judges walking around the field, you know, like looking at you, like, are they playing their heights right? Um, did they rush those 16, you know, like little things like that. And, and so it's like a really weird perspective for me because it's been a, I don't know. It's like, it was ingrained into my mind for so long. It was weird. I, I get it because for myself, um, when I used to do um, beat streams, and I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, are they gonna judge me for using a different time signature than I had used before? Or are they gonna judge me for not mixing this down at mm -hmm. the same time as, as creating it? Because there are some days, you know, and I've learned, I've learned this um, through another uh produce another musician and it's almost like i didn't understand it until someone actually said it and that's mm. you don't well no excuse me let me rephrase that i understood it but it made more sense hearing it vocalized where got you yeah you create one day and you mix another day and mm. that's one thing because the way that, the way they explained it shout out to curtis king what they the way they explained it was you use one side of your brain to create. Mm. You're in a creator's mindset. Whereas mixing is more of a- Technical? Rift, exactly, technical, mathematical, and you're using two sides of your brain mm. at that point. And I'm like, you know what? It's, it's one of those things where you cannot really, you don't wanna get in that position where you're letting your mind go in one end and you're, yeah. you're trying your best to mix and it just doesn't it, it's not going to come out the best way it would where you come back and listen with a fresh pair of ears because mm. you're still in creative mode makes sense that actually makes sense so that's yeah. why i've learned that's why i said mixing mixing is something that i i have a few people who want me just to help mix or go over certain tracks with them because i you know, um, given upon music runs, you know, in my family. So it's like yeah. mixing is something that I, I'm with because growing up, um, for people who don't know, my father is a jazz musician who still plays to this day. Nice. Yeah. So growing up, and I said this in a previous interview, uh, I literally had to listen to 
every instrument and pinpoint every instrument I heard in different songs growing up. Mm, so I, it's like I'm trained to listen to different things, even the softer sounds. And yeah, it's like I go back to that experience to my mixing. If I can't hear a certain instrument clearly or something sounds smothered, then I'm looking to see, okay, how can I fix it? And then- How can I clear that up? It's all muddy. Yeah, I get you. And then it's small things, kind of like you said, you um, you did orchestra, you were more so in the orchestral um, side of, band, of, of music at one mm -hmm. point. You could tell like there are instruments spread out Mm -hmm. throughout the entire um stage and that's just not for show that's by actual design yeah. so all all the sounds are heard clearly yes. so in the same nature you kind of have to when you're doing electronic music kind of have to recreate that whole entire feeling and mm -hmm. it's something that i've become obsessed with sometimes <laughs> <laughs> like because i would sit i would sit mixing something for an hour or two hours and i would just think okay how can i make this better so yeah it's it's a lot of fun when it comes to part of the blood. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun when it comes to music. Yeah. But um, what were some of your influences when it comes to music outside of like you know growing up with school? Like, what are some of your more um growing up influences or recent influences? Mm -hmm. Uh, well, both my parents are musicians as well. Um, they're both older. My parents mm -hmm. they basically like skipped a generation and a half to have kids. Um, but my, my father, he did a lot of big band and jazz. He was an amazing trumpet player. He learned from a lot of great, you know, like musicians out, you know, in, in Cali and all that stuff. Nice. So he'd been down that road, you know, he had his really nice trumpets growing up. But as a kid, he'd bring them out, you know, like, oh, this old thing, you know? Um, <laughs> I can relate. Yeah. I can relate. Yeah. And my mom, she, uh, she was also a, a percussionist as well, but she didn't necessarily share too much. Um, she also loved the fact that she could like dip in both worlds um you know instead of color guard they have um she her school had twirling so she was a twirler so she would always show off her twirling skills with the baton and everything and that was really really cool but they never either one of them really wanted to pressure us into what instrument if we wanted to play one would we go would we go through um so it definitely it made my mom happy though when you know i decided to do percussion after talking with my instructor and i was in like middle school so i didn't know and he's like you have really good rhythm, you should try percussion. And I'm like, oh, like my mom? And he's like, yeah, like your mom. That's probably why you have such good rhythm. Like you're just used to it. And I was like, okay, okay, that's fine. Um, so I think my mom definitely kind of inspired me a little bit because I'd ask her questions, you know, cause it's, it's a little bit more, percussion's a little bit more of a male dominated field. Mm -hmm. um, so it was very like, um, you definitely had to learn to really like kind of stand up for yourself a little bit. Like, no. I don't care, Timmy. Like, you're not going to get all the snare parts, you know? Um, just because, you know, you've been here longer just because you're a guy, you know, doesn't necessarily mean that um, I don't have a shot at it. So it was definitely a lot of parts where I had to um, assert, become more assertive. I was a very quiet kid. And I think that's also why it's helped with streaming a lot, you know, because it tends to be a lot of people online that look at you as only one certain thing. And they tend to group you in with a, a certain other group of females and I'm just not that. And, you know, I have a little bite to me, but I, I think it's just cause you know, I'm used to, to growing up with, you want that part? Well, so do I, let's see who can play it better, you know? And then we're going to have a judge tell us who played it better. And sorry if I played it better, you know, you can't get mad at me. Like I can't cheat. It's all on the chops. Um, so definitely, I think my mom was a big inspiration and in, like standing up for yourself and things that she had to deal with, um, you know. And then other than that, I think one of the other inspirations for drum set was, uh, it was like 2006 or seven. It was the first like actual concert I'd gone to with a whole bunch of friends, but s one of my favorite bands, Skillet, was there. And uh, it was with their Very new talented. album new album at the time, Comatose. And their original f drummer, her name was Lori, she has this really cool long blonde hair and she just looks so freaking BA, dude. And she was just like, she could be a complete boss on the stage. And I was like, you know what? I, I play on stage, but I don't play quite like that, but I can learn it. I can learn it. That's fun. You know, like that seems really cool with the violins and the, the fire and the metal, like the guitars and the, he's swinging his bass. Like, this is dope. I kind of want to do this. So ever since then, I, I just, you know, kind of, 
I don't really have too many other favorite drummers that really inspired me. Like I, I listen to a, a mix, like I'll watch how they play, how they interpret music. But then that's been more of like a broad sense. Um, I look more for showmanship really than anything and how each drummer takes on a different perspective of how they portray, you know, their craft. Some drummers are very like, Bleh! and then some are like, ha ha. And some are like, eh, you know, like hands up in the air, very crazy. And their, their drum sets turning around. So I, I think it's definitely just kind of been a broad variety um, and, and giving a glance. And sometimes I like the way it looks. Sometimes I don't, you know, but at least you learn like how many different styles there are out there. Dope. I'm definitely going to be tuning into those um, drum streams because, because oh <laughs> no, I'm, it's I'm like, so nervous. don't no. be, cause it's like, for, like you, you said music uh, back and forth between like 14 you said about 14 years it's been yeah. about roughly about 15 16 since i've been doing um production since i started music yeah. production and i would say this year will mark 10 years since i've been doing it more so to the point of it's been more so off and on now but there was a point where i used to sell music professionally and I would, okay, sell, yeah. I would sell my music profession at that point. Yeah, that's, and... that's a craft. My instructor used to do that. So I'd sit over his shoulder and watch him. He's like, oh, they're paying for this piece. I got to get it out. It is. And I would say I stopped around 2014. Okay. Because I just I just guess I got to the point where, and I don't mind saying this to people, I'm a person who I am very picky mm -hmm. on where and who I select with my music only because I know when you fuse it with lyrics, that's your name on that too. Yes. And that you're somewhat representing that. And I yes. just said, I want to have more control over that. Now, what I could do, I don't mind if I put some music on, on YouTube that's free and people use that. I got no control over that. Mm -hmm. But what I do have control over and then I've gotten a bit more interested in is sound design and that's actually creating sounds for other music producers to do it's like yeah. the other day one of my friends was telling me you know i still have some old stuff that i did for you he said i'm going to tell people that you i'm going to i'm going to if people ask who this up, i'm going to call you ask and ask you are you getting work every time it's happening i'm, I'm going to call you ask you do you want some work and i'm saying <laughs> i'm going to say no because I I guess I got to the point where there's a level of freedom when you can just create and you don't have to think about now who's this going to go to. Mm. You can create it more so for yourself. Yeah. And it I guess I get that inspiration kind of for from my own father because he's a saxophone player. Okay. And a flute player and he's Okay. And it's it's like I remember I can still remember uh just different days before he'll go to bed each night, you can hear him practicing, always mm -hmm. practicing. And it's like, yeah. it put me in that mindset of how can I always practice? How can I mm -hmm. always get better? And how can I just make something for myself? How can I make something? How can I be a, cre a content creator in my music craft without mm -hmm. relying on somebody else? to push my music out there. And I just love this era that we're in where you could go totally independent and not rely on it's somebody true. else. Oh, it's so true, definitely. And it's so. awesome like when you're able to do that and feel kind of that liberation, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, because I, I agree, you know, I'm kind of the same way as far as like, even with myself and the music I associate with, lyrics play a huge part. and. That's a whole other discussion of whether or not people feel like lyrics actually impact them or not. I personally think it has a lot of impact on people. I and agree. Like just their, you know, their their demeanor, their soul, whatever you want to call it. I, I like I respect that about you because you know a lot of people will be like, oh, but it's you know it's paycheck, you know, or you know it's 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 my name spread around. And the fact that you choose to kind of look beyond that. I'd be like more, this is more of a message. This is more of my branding, my image and my message. You know, that's a big thing because a lot of people nowadays are just changing, they're just chasing those dollar signs and not necessarily really chasing a set of standards for themselves, if that makes sense. It so does. much respect. <laughs> it, it does because there's, there are people who are probably watching this who have known me for about that 10 year time span 
who are probably laughing right now because at that time, 10 years ago, so so you wouldn't sell it for this person. They offered you X amount of, I'm like, mm. no. And they say, it'll be different if they owed you, if, they, if that briefcase was in front of you. And I said, here's my response to that. And every time it worked, I said, I've been living this long without that much. I'm gonna mm. live tomorrow. Mm. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> that's my response. I've been living without it for this long. I think I'll be okay tomorrow. I think I'll be okay. <laughs> and I, I look at it that way. I look at it as it's more opportunity. I look back now, it, it gives me a point to, to know that I can't be bought. Even even people now, it's like, if you was to offer me this, I'm like, eh, no. And I guess, I guess it could be perceived as power crazy over your own work and everything, or too restrictive. And I I I'm willing to accept that. But at the same time, I I have to understand that, like you said, lyrics play a, a big role. I have two kids that are growing up, so I, I got to be mm -hmm. mindful of. This is a world that they're going in and whatever yes. that I do, I'm building steps for them. So it's yeah. like, you gotta be very mindful of yeah. different things. Mm -hmm. So, but um, that actually wraps most things up. I just wanna end off with one last question that I ask almost everyone who's, who came on the show. Sure. If you have any advice to give any content creator or, you know what, I'm gonna switch it up. If you have any advice that you would g giving yourself when you first started, mm -hmm. what advice would that be? Ooh, um, let's see. Advice to myself. Oh, uh, people are literally just gonna hate everything that you do, no matter what you do. You could do the thing that they would like, and they would still hate it. And uh, like that sounds like really like cold and matter of fact, but that's just how some people are. Some people are just not gonna like you, and you can't change that. I have definitely been one of those people. I was an eldest child. So, you know, if I did something wrong, I was told this is wrong, don't do it. So I don't do it and, you know, I don't get in trouble or, you know, I, I reap the reward. Whereas YouTube, someone's like, oh, don't do this. I don't like it. You don't do it or you change your style. Uh, yeah, well, you still sat in your chair wrong. And it's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I just can't do anything right. So I, I think definitely is people are genuinely just going to try to find anything that they can um to throw negativity towards you and you just have to know am i doing my best am i am i building someone else up with what i'm doing right mm -hmm. um am, am i am i teaching am i am i sharing something invaluable with someone else you know which is a, a unique experience right am i being true to myself and um you know wait out it's it's not always the fastest growing thing again like what we talked about earlier quantity over quality it's you know, a lot of people are chasing quantity and they give up very quickly when they realize it doesn't happen overnight. Um, a lot of people that have sought success have been doing this for years, you know? Um, and it's definitely one of those things, like just know that you just gotta be you. And there'll be people that I hate and it's okay, um, you know, to, uh, to do what you need to do to get rid of those really negative people, you know, mute, block, whatever it is. Um, you know, I'm a big person of avoid echo chambers, but at the same time, there are just some people who don't know how to be positive ever in their life. And it's unfortunate. I wish them well, but you know, I'm not your punching bag and you shouldn't be either. So don't let them treat you like a punching bag because you are great. She's right. Like, seriously, um, people say that you probably shouldn't like police your comments with your chat and i'm actually a person who promotes that i feel like you should uh have a good moderation and good control over that because if they're like that towards you and you're not doing nothing towards it then what's stopping them from being like that towards other people in the chat right and if they are willing to disrespect people in the chat and then you're not doing nothing about it then that's an even bigger problem yeah. so you taking control of it you say no this stops here we're not allowing that yeah. That shows that commands level of, of respect that people will have to make sure yes. they respect in the future. So, and you never know because again, behind every you know, uh, behind every hurtful comment is a real person that you're trying to insult, but mm -hmm. behind every troll is an actual other human as well. And you know, I, I've had situations, and, and for those of you who experience this as well, if you decide to go this route, I've had people 
who have been horrible or, or trolly towards me and I've addressed them. They've still been banned, but I've addressed them like, hey, I don't deserve to be talked about that way. I think you're mistaken, you know, blah, blah, blah. This is, you know, my argument against your comment, you know, like just kind of in passing, like I'll probably, I remember I was in a game of Overwatch one time and someone did that. They messaged me later that night. Hey, I'm honestly really sorry. I know I was a total jerkwad to you, um, but you seem really cool. Um, you know, I understand if you don't want to unban me, but if you ever do decide to give me a second chance, um, you know, I, I promise, you know, I'll be an actual decent human being. And they're one of the most supportive people to this day. But they just because they were having a bad day, they made one stupid comment and it could have ruined, you know, a bond. So mm -hmm. you never know. Sometimes you standing up for yourself makes people go, oh, shoot. You know, this person's I, actually kind of cool. And I was not. I agree. And it's like when you responded in ways where you, like you said, you stand up for yourself and yeah. you respond in a way where it's like, hey, you know, we're not allowing this here, but you yeah. do address them. It it shows one it shows it does show a level of class but then it also shows that it shows that for other people who are lurking in to mm -hmm. this person's cool but let's not cross this line right yeah <laughs> exactly. let's let's not cross this line out of respect that's not a threatening thing but just out of respect yeah definitely so well i want to thank you for your time thank you so much sure. for coming on if you guys have not already make sure you follow miss click on youtube where you will catch many many good replays as well <laughs> you can follow her on twitch for gaming streams now drum streams and follow her on twitter because she's just awesome all around Aww. so thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoyed this interview make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button and most of all, most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. This is Zavadon and Miss Click, and we are out. Bye, Peace, guys. guys.